What has the metaverse got to do with us as Muslims, Medina, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Let's find out. Let's talk. Back in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whilst he was delivering the Friday khutbah, a caravan equipped with music festivities, entertainment, and merchandise soon entered the city of Medina. It's a striking incident and one that's captured in the Quran. When they saw the fanfare along with the caravan, they left you standing alone on the pulpit. Now, where am I going with all of this? Well, this caravan is pretty much still around today just in a different form. You see, with the advent of the television, the computer, and soon after the internet, we pretty much saw this caravan make its way into our homes. And over the last 15 years, following the release of the smartphone and mobile internet, we literally have had this caravan following us everywhere we go. Add social media into the mix, and you get the picture. This caravan isn't leaving us alone. And what makes this caravan even more distracting is the fact that it's not just generic entertainment. Rather, thanks to algorithms and artificial intelligence, it's strategically engineered to present content that appeals to you. It knows your individual preferences, interests and wants, whether it's sports, comedy or even cat videos. These algorithms have reached a point where they know you better than you know yourself. Google or Facebook can create an algorithm that knows you better than you know yourself. They've pretty much hacked our impulses and they know how to keep us addicted. It's not guesswork, it's science. Every time they present you with a new notification, a new post, a new video that they know you will enjoy, dopamine is released through your brain and your motivation to keep scrolling only intensifies. And as such, we're no longer interested in the natural real world. Because quite frankly, the real world can't reward us with the same levels of dopamine we receive online, artificially. It's a repetitive, vicious cycle that has most of us addicted, while social media giants are making billions of dollars. It's a proven formula that works, and they aren't planning on stopping at all. In fact, they're only planning on taking this further. You see, this caravan that has been following us around from the outside will soon become our home, our walls, and the very roof above our heads, thanks to Mark Zuckerberg and what he has dubbed the metaverse. It's said to be the next iteration of the internet, whereby the physical world will fuse with the digital screen, forming a virtual world where you will socialize, work, play games, and pretty much live your own virtual life. You'll have your own virtual home, your own friends, and even your own realistic avatar of yourself. And thanks to headsets like these, we will completely and totally be immersed. And I know a lot has already been said about this and much criticism has already been made. I mean, we've already seen enough damage from social media as it exists today, whether that's through the rise of anxiety, depression, addiction, pornography, loneliness, and the rapid decline of society. We can only imagine how worse it will become. Yet, despite all that has already been said, there's something else I want to hone in on. One of the greatest consequences these distractions have had on our lives is their ability to make us forget Allah and forget the Quran. And it's not because anyone is actively forcing us to stop remembering Allah or stop reading the Quran, but rather, we are so distracted, we are no longer receptive. Hear me out. Let's go back to where we started in the beginning. You see, as the companions were met with this caravan of distraction, and they left the Prophet wasallam standing all alone, Allah instructs the Prophet to tell them, قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Say, what is with Allah is far better than amusement and merchandise. What is with Allah 
is far greater than the distractions, the entertainment, the pastimes. It's a blatant truth. Yet for many of us, myself included, we can no longer see it. Why? Well, we need to get out of the caravan for a start. You see, in order for us to be receptive to Allah and His words, we need to be people of life, people of mind, people of hearing, and people of sight. As Allah states in the Quran, لِيُنْذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيَّ To warn those, a book to warn those who are alive. And in another verse, إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَا ذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَى السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ It's a reminder for people who have heart, hearing, and are a witness. A witness by all means is someone who is present and not someone who's distracted. You see, while social media giants keep coming up with ways to further push us away from real life, Allah calls us to that which truly gives us life. We just need to answer. يا أيها الذين آمنوا استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم. O oh believers, respond to Allah and His Messenger when He calls you to that which gives you life. Connecting with Allah, connecting with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, connecting with one another as Muslims gives us life. And our greatest pride as Muslims is in being people of life, not people who are distracted. And I know I have my shortcomings and I say this message with a hint of salt, knowing that I myself do struggle and I might even consider myself a hypocrite considering that I'm heavily involved in social media. But I just want us to be aware and mindful of what's taking place. And I pray that we may never forget that what is with Allah is far greater than the caravans of distraction. These distractions also are having deep impacts on who we are as individuals and in shaping our identities. And in a further video, I do plan on breaking this down. So be sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, like the video to stay up to date. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.